Hey, what's up, YouTube? Um, I'm here in Cubase 10. Uh, it's actually the first video I've ever put up, but um, I've just kind of stumbled across this feature, um, kind of doing a bit of research on it, and it's I think it's something that's been kind of overlooked and misunderstood in Cubase since about version 7 when they introduced it, um, and that's the control room. Um, I mean, I'm absolutely loving Cubase 10. It's great. You can drag all of your third-party VSDs from these nice, pretty menus over straight onto your tracks and stuff now. But that's not really what I want to talk about. Uh, Control Room is um, really a powerful tool, and I think quite often overlooked. Um, a lot of people probably think it's more made for large-scale commercial studios who want to route audio to different recording booths and things like that but you can actually make use of it on a small-scale home studio and I'll show you how so the first thing you're going to want to do is set it up now you can turn it on here I've always had this thing switched off by default but um, I'm gonna do it in the F4 window so I'm here in, F in the uh, VST connections window this is my ma main output here and that's signified by this red speaker which means it's my main mix if you've got multiple outputs here, only one of them will have this red speaker. And that's important because that when you disconnect this, that's going to be what gets fed into your control room. Uh, now, not, before I disconnect this, this would normally be on uh, output 1 and 2. I've got it on 3 and 4 because I've got my sound card jerry rigged to uh, record audio through itself. And um, I don't want to get any feedback from the mic from hearing the audio through the speakers. So we'll go over to control room here. I'm going to add a channel. I'll oh, turn it on first, yeah. that would help. So yeah, it does the same as the button here. So then I'm going to add a monitor channel. Uh, this one I'm going to call Belisis M1 Speakers. And add a second one, which I'm going to call Subpack and Headphones. set up the routing here in a moment. I'm going to also add a queue which I'm going to call reference. Now you can add up to four of these which is pretty handy if you want to reference against multiple uh, reference tracks. Project. So basically what's going to happen is my stereo out is going to be mimicked in control room through these monitors that I just set up which you can actually switch between at the click of a button so say you wanted your output to come through your, your monitors you can have it on this one and if you want it to come through your sub pack and headphones you can have it on this one which is pretty handy other things that are cool about the control room is with, at the click of a button you can down mix stereo out to mono and back to stereo again uh, if you want to check for you know, any unwanted phasing issues on, on your master bus so I'm going to go back into the, this connections window now. Um, my audio is probably going to drop out for just a quick sec here while I disconnect this. And uh, I'm going to reconnect this on my speaker output um, on 3 and 4 again. Once again it would normally be on 1 and 2 but because I'm recording it's on 3 and 4. So just bear with me one sec. Okay, I'm going to set my sub pack to the main output, but I'm going to be using it for now. Okay, so now that's all set up, we can close out of this, and we can start talking about the features of this thing. So, uh, what's super useful about this, I find, is it adds these listen buttons to all of the channels here, right next to the mute and solo. So instead of just soloing one track at a time, or multiple tracks at a time, you can actually listen to this stuff uh, in the context of your mix. So, if you open this menu up here, you'll see the listen feature here. Another thing to mention quickly is if you want your metronome click to funnel through uh, control room you'll have to activate that and then while it's playing, which I'll demonstrate shortly, uh, all you have to do is turn it on down here and it'll work like normal. Now if you can set the attenuation amount of the listen function um, I'll, I'll do it quite extreme to about minus 20 dB here and uh, when I'm playing the project I'll, I'll, I'll solo or listen to various functions and you'll see how that works okay so let's have a listen <laughs> Wow, 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 wow,
So yeah, the listen function's super handy there. Um, obviously, yeah, I've already, already gone over these, but I'm not, I'm not going to show you with the track playing. But yeah, you can down mix to mono here. <laughs> And back to stereo again at the uh, uh, you know click of a button. Now um, the same here applies. A click of a button will switch between your outputs. Like I said earlier, I can't switch over to this one because I'll get some feedback from the mic. But um, that's how you would do that. Now going back to the referencing, this is the other really cool feature about this. So I've, I've pulled in a uh, cause for concern, Matrix and Fierce remix here, which you know is a similar vibe to the what I was going for with this, I was kind of going for an old C4C bad company kind of vibe with this track. Um, so this this is in here as a reference track, it's just a standard audio track. Now I've turned off the uh, connection to the output, it's on no bus. Now what you're going to want to do is in your inspector here, go down to your setup wheel and if they're not activated you're going to want to activate QSENDs. Now the QSENDs basically route whatever you're sending through to the control room on this Q button here, and you can have up to four of them, um, but it won't pass through your master processing chain here. So if you've got a mastered reference track here, you can listen to it against your own mastering chain um, with the click of a button, and I'll demonstrate that now. Again, you know, as I was saying earlier, you can also independently change the volume of what you're hearing in, in the studio versus uh, without affecting your master channel. So yeah, there you have it. That's the uh, control room in Cubase. It's a it's a feature that I find uh, really underrated, I think, and I'm glad that I've kind of dug beneath the surface and figured out what this thing's capable of. hope this video is helpful. Um, I know a few of my mates have been telling me that uh, they've never really used this thing either, so I figured I'd make my first YouTube video and kind of try and walk them through the process of setting it up. And, uh, you know, if you want to see any more tutorials or whatever of Cubase 10, um, walkthroughs of the features, I've got the whole Steinberg lineup here. I've Wavelab Pro 9.5, Halion 6, Groove Agent 5. If there's anything you want to see there with relation to you know drum and bass production, you know, I'm no expert, but I uh, feel like I'm just kind of getting to know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, let me know. Drop a like. Let me know what you'd like to see done. All right, peace.